Something that's really cool is I'm filming in the middle of a road and I know that there's gonna be absolutely no cars coming down. And the reason I know that is because this road is closed. But amazingly, the man at the barrier allowed us to come through and park here. So hats off to him because we're able to park at the Three Shires Head layby and then choose the quickest route. Can't say I've ever done this before, but it feels good. Today I'm up in the Peak District on a very wet, boggy field at the moment. Now I'm out today, as you can see, with my dad who's just here. Hello. There we go, that's my dad. Um, now my dad hasn't been joining me much recently because he's uh, had ill health. So I'm really happy to have him along with me today for today's photography adventure. Now my dad in his own right, if you don't know, uh, is a good photographer. He comes from the world of film and he's recently transferred over to the world of digital. So I think he's kind of getting to grips with that side of things at the moment. And I think he's enjoying it. Are you enjoying it, Dad? Yes, love it. We've decided to come to a place called Three Shires Head. Now, if you're a landscape photographer, uh, this is a place which you'll probably know. Uh, you can see how muddy it is, by the way. Look at this. Crazy muddy. It's nice to see, though, we've had a bit of rain uh, recently. Uh, this is going to be good for the waterfall shots. Oh, man. I'm getting wet trainers. I should have wore something a bit more appropriate for this, I think. But we're going to shoot, though, at the Three Shires Head. And this is a lovely place um, where you've got three uh, counties which meet up, which is Derbyshire, Staffordshire, I believe, and Cheshire. And they all meet at this point where there's a couple of waterfalls. So we're on our way there now, and we're gonna take some lovely waterfall photos. <laughs> that folks <laughs> he's just walked through a pile of stinging nettles and they're stinging his legs ouch so i need to own up to an absolute catalogue of errors um, <laughs> i'd just start again <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's probably a good idea so what's happened is um i've spent the last hour walking us here in the wrong directions completely because i chose to not follow the instructions given and try to do it my own way don't do that when you come here, because it will just get you lost. Um, my dad's walked up just about every hill there is in the Peak District, and I told him he's gonna be walking up no hills, so poor him. But we are definitely on the right route now, uh, and we've just had that confirmed. It was nice of him, yeah. he said, would you like a sandwich? <laughs> there, was a, there was a lovely guy that we just bumped into um, who lives just outside the path um, to the waterfalls down here. And he was very kind to just let us know that we are walking in the right direction. He even offered us a sandwich, which is very nice of him. Of course, we didn't take him up on the offer, um, even though my dad was tempted. Um, and he was a vegetarian, so it's, it's never good when my dad said he wants a bacon sandwich. But there we go. Anyway, we're heading down to the waterfall now, and we should get there in approximately about 15 minutes' time. <laughs> So I can strongly hear the waterfalls now and we're just approaching
feel like a child in a candy store with all the choice of them sweets that you have that you can choose from. There's so many different things in this scene that I could take a picture of, it really is incredible. This is reminding me of a video I watched um, recently, a guy called Elijah Lacardi, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, and he is a world-renowned landscape photographer. He's travelled the world many times and he's took some beautiful landscape photos. I think he actually worked for the F Stoppers community and he has done for quite a few years. But in the video he said that once he was in Iceland and he had this scene where there was so much going on in it, there's so much incredible landscapes in one scene. There was waterfalls, there was mountains, there was an incredible foreground. And this is a dangerous thing to get in as a photographer, into this state where you feel that you've got to capture the whole scene. So today I'm going to, you know, not get caught in that trap and I'm going to try and break down the scene a composition at a time. Because sometimes you can kind of throw the laws of composition right out the window, try and capture everything, and it just ends up not looking particularly good. So, I'm gonna go and find myself a good spot to set up. So here I am, finally, standing ready to take my first shot. After many hours walking around getting lost, my poor dad standing behind the camera now has had to go through absolute hell. But he's managed it and he's got a smile on his face, so all is good. So this is my first composition and I've decided to go vertically. Now I looked at some pictures, a bit of cheating really, I looked at some pictures before I got here of how other photographers that took it. And I wanted to do something which was a, which was a bit unique, but uh, it's very difficult when you've got a lack of time to come up with a unique composition. So I've decided to go for a nice vertical composition. In fact, the best way for me to show you is to actually show you my live view screen. Come and have a look. Okay guys, so this is my screen at the moment. As you can see, I've got this nice vertical composition which is set to lead your eye from the bottom of the waterfall all the way up to the main bridge here which is called Pack Horse Bridge. Now we've got a few things going on with the filters as well. So I've got an ND8 which is a three stop ND filter just to give me a little bit more exposure time so I can just blur out the water a little bit. But I wanna keep some detail in the water. I don't want it to be completely blurred because I think it looks a bit nicer that way. I've also got a polarizer on to give me some more green here in the, uh, in the green and also to uh, get rid of some of the reflections coming down here. Let me just switch that back over. Coming down here in the waterfall as well. Finally, I'm actually bracketing this shot at one stop either side as well. So there's a lot going on in this image, but I actually need it to make sure I get the image how I need it. So I'm going to focus here, which is the third way in, take my shot, and there's about a six second exposure, and there you go. Now that's probably a little bit dark actually, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the auto bracketing setting on my camera. At the moment, it's one stop either side, but that's given me a, a bit too much of a dark image overall. So I'm actually just gonna take that back down and I'm gonna take it off and set it as okay. Now I'm gonna go back into my shot. You can actually use your phone. Now what I'm doing here is actually using Canon's app. It's called Canon Connect or Camera Connect and it's through Canon. And what you can do is you can sync your mobile phone here but with your camera and use it as a shutter release. So it's actually a really handy way of making sure you don't get any camera shake when you're taking a picture. Now when it's connected, you'll get this nice big tick. Now I will say, if you're not using a Canon phone, I'm sure that Nikon, Sony, and other uh, camera manufacturers will have a similar app which you can use as a shutter release. But because I'm shooting with a Canon, then I'm going to use this one. Press start, and then finally, I choose remote live view shooting and then what this does is it enables me to just press my button there as you can see and take my picture so it's really simple 
and because I've got my mirror locked up and I'm not going to be touching the camera, I know that it's going to be tack sharp because I've got all my settings in place. So you probably can't see this, but the sun has just set over my shoulder on those beautiful Peak District peaks over there. So the light is against us and my dad has already headed back to the car, bless him. He's very tired, it's been a long day. And I did spend a lot of time walking him around, getting him lost. So I don't really blame him for leaving me here. I've got driving duties, so uh, he can rest up and I really don't mind. I've just been so happy that I've been able to spend some time with him on this photography adventure. Now, if you would like to visit this beautiful place, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick a PDF download in the description area on YouTube so that you can just click on it and download the link. And that means that you'll be able to follow the correct walk and not get lost like we did. Or should I say, like I did. I must take responsibility. Now, if you'd like to check out the photos from today, you can do. All you need to do is go on my um, Instagram page and if you don't know what that is, no problem. Just go in the YouTube description and then you can click on the link there. I've had a great day today, it's been lovely. It's definitely been an adventure, getting lost, uh, having a laugh with my dad and meeting that nice man who offered to make us. Uh, definitely not a bacon sandwich because he was a vegetarian. Um, but it's been great fun. And if you enjoy watching these videos, it would just be awesome. And I'd be so grateful if you just subscribe